fallout, which may occur miles and miles away from the blast. You need to know about fallout, what it is, how to detect it. These bits of matter can be dangerous. The particles in that fallout behave like miniature X-ray machines, sending out radiation in all directions. And if you are exposed to them long enough, you will be hurt. It's so February 25th. I mean, nuclearproctologist.org. I'm going to talk about radioactive fallout, of all things. That's illegal, by the way. And the other one was uh, radioactive fallout. I choose radioactive fallout because I don't believe in violence like them. Is that a good sign or something? turn that down. Good morning, good night, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're to, wherever you are, welcome everyone. I really like that beat. I like it. Radioactive fallout. How do you approach that subject? Radioactive fallout. After radioactive fallout, just we got a bunch of little clips for everybody tonight, but after radioactive fallout, this was the first time we've ever seen where they went around and picked up bags. And to give you an idea, they picked up 30 million that we know about, according to Al Jazeera and others. And what that means, though, is if you put each one in the back of a pickup truck, 30 million pickup trucks, they're 20 foot long each, one ton pickup trucks, right? And that's what, that's what you need. That's as much as you can put in the back of one of those trucks is one of them bags. So those fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 pickup trucks, you see the great big pickup trucks? That's generally what they can carry is one of those bags. So it's a significant amount is what I'm trying to say. And that would be five rows of traffic right around the planet, bumper to bumper, continuous lines right around the planet, five rows side by side, you would have to walk over five rows of traffic to get to the other side of the road, the other side of the planet. Does that make any sense? Don't worry. Officials admit deadly Fukushima meltdown cover-up. The TEPCO president, which is nationalized by the government now, by the way, which means the government runs it, we lied about the meltdowns. It was a cover-up. It's a grave issue, unprecedented nuclear disaster. They lied? I thought they were the most honest people on the planet. <laughs> I don't like being gullible, but I am. So let's go back and look at what these, when there was a looming war, they warned everybody about the radioactive fallout, fallout, not the bombs, but fallout, radioactive fallout, like the stuff that goes in the bag. That's how I think is a good way to approach it. The biggest danger from fallout is the fact that the particles do not have to touch you to endanger you. <gasps> the product doesn't need to touch you to endanger you. That, my friends, is the team tonight. Hello, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Worldwide. Hi, everybody out there sat back. We got uh, Lane as moderator in your blue. Hi, Lane. <laughs> Be strong, be yourself, strontium milk. Uh, Joe, which is 239 joint. Joyce, Sacramento. It's a connection for me, right? It's important, too, I think. And it's important to recognize that other people are not in the comments section. So, hi, yeah, how's it going, eh? Thank you for coming, boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Speaking about boy, oh, boy. We got a story for everyone tonight. The lady in your blue is a wonderful soul. Her name is Elaine. She's Shawnee in 775, and she is your moderator. And she's seen it all at this stage, so she doesn't have to explain herself to anybody, but she does, but she doesn't have to. She has free reign on my site to block people and to deal with people that are not being genuine or sincere. 
And it used to be a thankless job, but now a lot of people thank her. And so that's great. And history will tell that story, hopefully, how important that was that people were able to have a conversation. Shanti was a blogging. Organic Slant is out there blogging. There's not many bloggers left on the planet. Kevin Blanche is out there. Let's roll it. Let's roll. And a good story for everybody tonight. Kind of relaxing story for a change. I just had a nap. Woke up an hour before the show started. I'm plotting the next expedition in about two months. This is a super special expedition I'm putting together this time. Totally different than everything we've done before. So enough is enough. The biggest danger from fallout is the fact that the particles do not have to touch you to endanger you. And so what you see is a particle that these wiggly lines are pulsing. That's the pulse from the radiation, from the little tiny microscopic radiation. Pulses right through the house. See that? Pulses through the upper floor and down through the ceiling inside the house. See that? And so the people that were filling up the bags, the victims, and being in that environment, this is why I'm so adamant to work hard every day. The radioactive follow, you can't touch each other because they're hot. She's behind that glass because she's irradiated. That's right after Fukushima. And she was uh, segregated, the one in the black. They picked up these bags, not because they felt that that would make a difference, but they picked it up because they felt they could trick people. And so the dog because he's lowered to the ground or she's lowered to the ground, will accumulate a lot more radiation. And you can't check their internal dose per se the same way. Or I should say accurately. But you can. If there's radiation in the dog, you can definitely pulse out of the dog, particularly when you're in this environment. So you don't need to dig those bags up and check the soil. You just got to do it like you're doing with the dog because there's so much dirt. And so if you ingest it, it likes to sequester in your muscles, your organs, and your bones. Then it pulses, just like I was showing you earlier. We're going to show you a lot of that kind of stuff coming up. And that's bad, bad. So even though it's in the bag, just being close to the bag is dangerous. And when you've got a lot in a big bag like that, if you had that in the back of a pickup truck, you were still in danger of being in the pickup truck anywhere. Or driving alongside the pickup truck would endanger you. And so when you see numbers where th uh, 360 plus, these are two separate studies. And the one to your right is the radioactive fallout from France's uh, government of Fukushima, of one of the models. But if you come here and you watch the whole video, you might not understand everything right away, but by the end of the video, you're, you got a pretty good handle on it. If you went back and watched the video again, you get a handle on it, right? Because it is complicated. you right, and that is a problem. And I would typically, still do certainly, but typically I had always advocated watching documentaries six or seven times. Now I have to do that to pick up all the lies because there's so many lies in them, right? But you would watch it six or seven times, and that still you wouldn't be able to comprehend everything because your, your brain is aggregating and storing and shifting and comparing information. And so I have to watch documentaries, and I've been doing this a long time before Fukushima happened. Now, the, what you're seeing is a plume covered the entire Pacific and the entire northern continent, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Northern Hemisphere, right? And so anybody that was outdoors, because this is a continuous line, so it's nonstop, and this was over about seven or eight days, and so everybody got exposed. So this is a big black eye for the nuclear industry, and they took the monster route and decided to hide it from the population because they were in a position to do something like that. And because they're inbreeds of inbreeds, 
their natural reaction, because this is how come when they got the job in the first place was because they do things for corporations. But what you're seeing is catastrophic. So it wasn't just Fukushima Prefecture with radioactive fallout. Family fallout shelters. Think about those words, fallout shelters. In a nuclear attack on this country, one of the greatest threats would be radioactive fallout. While heat and blast effects of even the largest bombs would have a definite limit, any area could be threatened by fallout. The large number of weapons which probably would be dropped in a full-scale attack would produce fallout, ranging from light to intense over much of the nation. Weapons exploded close to the earth cause greatest fallout hazards. Thousands of tons of earth particles are drawn upward into the ascending mushroom cloud where radioactive products of the nuclear explosion contaminate them. These particles are carried by the high altitude winds for many miles. Eventually they settle to earth and this is called radioactive fallout. And so this stuff in the bay is because the nuclear power plant blew up, caught fire, and it's not like it happened in, in just a millionth of a second with a nuclear bomb. It caught fire and continued to release, and that might last forever, but it's a massive volume, and you'll understand that coming up. What you're seeing is so significant. It's just so surreal. Nuclear fallout zone. Now, this was a common sign back in those days. But in large amounts, the amounts produced by nuclear explosions, radiation can make you seriously ill or even kill you. So the fallout pulsing, you don't even have to ingest it. It doesn't have to land on you. You, gotta be on, you can be on the other side of a wall and it's pulsing through the wall. And so these little bags, by the way, are only meant to last a short period of time. Now, when you see stuff like this, Japan's supermarket labels Fukushima area cabbage as grown a thousand kilometers from the meltdown. The reason they done that was because the cabbage is grown in this environment. And because they felt guilty, they tried to hide it. Now, the reason there's six and ten Fukushima children tested to have diabetes is not because they're walking past the bags all the time, it's because they're living in that environment. And so diabetes is one of the first things which show up in a heavy radiated area. And in the bottom three sentences, you see that the Tokyo Area Medical Clinic said we are expecting diabetes in children from the Fukushima radiation because, you know, there's so much of it, right? Radiation fears spread to the forest industries. And that's because of radioactive fallout. It actually contaminated not just the local area, but also the forest. You can't power wash the trees and the pollen and everything else. It goes, it's assimilated into the root system itself. So all the insects and bacteria and worms and everything were excreting or dying from that fallout or disappeared because of it. Now, then you see headlines like this followed from Fukushima causing problems 180 kilometers away, contaminated wild vegetables, fish, wild game, it's all become no good. And just because they didn't pick it up 180 miles away, the only reason they picked it up was just to trick people into having the Olympics there, basically. Radiation produced by nuclear weapons presents a revolutionary threat to our country. In an enemy attack, it could become a direct threat to us all. Fortunately, there are means of protecting ourselves, means so effective that civil defense officials believe everyone can survive fallout if they take a few simple precautions to protect themselves. And so that was to get out of the way, have a shelter, have clean food, have clean water, have a scenario 
where you can get in the middle of a building. Now, the stuff from a meltdown, from these nuclear meltdowns in Japan, have some weird attributes. When you have a lot of fallout, what it basically means is the fallout is pulsing. It's hitting other fallout that's pulsing. Now, the pulses are at the speed of light, and so they change direction, which is not normal. And what this does is creates an X-ray, uh, like a gamma shine effect over very large areas, like over the continent, for instance, during the major fallout for the first several months. It was an invisible snowstorm, and this is why they made the models. When you leave everybody there in the most radiated environment and you gave them Geiger counters in order to alleviate their concern, but the moral and ethical thing was to move them away because the area was so radiated. See that? So you shouldn't put people in the houses behind it and you can't grow food there, but they did. And now they're continuing to do it. And, but it turns out that they actually have an agenda. This is an actual agenda to exterminate a large population of the planet. But it's more than that, because by proxy, you exterminate the animals, the marine life, the insects, and the microscopic world. So when you take out the microscopic world, by proxy, you're going to kill off all the insects anyway. The insects can't survive without stuff like bacteria, and neither can fungi and the bases of the food chain on land can't survive without bacteria to break down things and, and help the food chain. On land, the food has to break down, for instance, to, for that ecosystem to exist. And so after Chernobyl, we see the whole ecosystem was annihilated. All the microscopic world in the forest, for instance, in the litter gets annihilated. And then there's nothing there now for insects to survive on, therefore nothing for birds, nothing for the little creatures, there's no ecosystem after a period of time. And then the trees, for instance, forest fires will be much more intense, but will just liberate, you can't destroy the radioactive isotopes, so it'll just liberate it into the environment. And so all of these are parts of the issue about radioactive fallout. What you're looking at, though, is the only time in history we've seen anything like it but they only done it, they done it for a deceptive reason. They picked the bags up in order to manipulate people to come back. But they're going to leave the bags there until at least 2045. The biggest danger from fallout is the fact that the particles do not have to touch you to endanger you. Right. And so if you eat it, then you have crossed every concept of reality. The minute you start growing food in a place where there's 30 million one-ton bags, then you set the stage for a genocide. These are Fukushima foods that are mutated. And there's a lot of victims there have asked people, for goodness sake, but there are like a lot of people where they can't see the big picture. But we see the big picture because we're back. We're able to take our time and study it, and we did. We have put the time and energy and effort into this. We have this incredible diversity of information, incredible amounts of information documented to help articulate what we're talking about. So the radioactive fallout, by the way, this is two separate studies showing the radioactive fallout covering the Pacific North America with extraordinary numbers. Now, you're only seeing a number called iodine-131, but there was way more isotopes. That is considered the tracer. That's a very bad tracer. That's an important part of the equation. Their deadly rays can penetrate any kind of material, but the material through which they pass absorbs part of the radiation and reduces the hazard. It can penetrate any kind of material. Now, when you burn it in the incinerators and release it back into the communities, it still has the same attributes. It does the exact same thing. So this is why they ran away and left their communities behind. Then the nuclear industry, in order to save face, done the unthinkable. They grew food, and then they falsely claimed that it was safe, and then 
when you wouldn't accept that, what they decided to do was make stuff like sake out of it. And he actually came to America, New York City, a few months ago and opened a sake shop. This was the Fukushima government. There shouldn't even be a government there. But the one there is so vicious and that the American government is so uh, should be sued because it allowed it to happen. You can't just grow food here. That's the wrong route to take, see? And we have this history that tells us this. Your safety depends upon putting a sufficient mass between yourself and the fallout. Concrete, bricks, earth, or sand are the best. Right, and so eating it is the opposite of doing that. Drinking it in sake or eating it with ice creams or rice or the other peaches and everything else is the opposite. I'm going to assume all the nuclear scientists don't know this, but it's wrong. And so I'm horrified and terrified that they're doing this. I'm mortified that there's so few of us having a conversation, an actual conversation about it. you got to realize we can change the future. We can hold them accountable minimum. And we can find a way forward if we admit we got a problem. But if we won't admit we got a problem, if we're going to continue to lie and pretend and deceive and just murder everybody with radiated food because we're in a position of authority like we're seeing happening, like we're seeing the media and the universities stay silent, but not just silence, but actually come out and help support the propaganda, the lie and the deception. And we don't see any academics from different disciplines speaking out. We've showed thousands and thousands and thousands of studies on this site. And then each of these studies will have one, two, 10, 15 people that done the study that are fake studies based, and we show how they actually are fake studies. That is overwhelming to see something like that. So Taiwan last year and after Fukushima, by the way, when they were having to vote on nuclear, they enlisted 2,200 students from the nuclear institutions and colleges to go out and spam everybody. They done that after Fukushima, too, in order to protect their future jobs. That's something to deal with. So I had 2,200 people, and Kevin Blanche and a few more of us had 2,200 students coming after us with the blessings of their professors and not only that, you would have seen nuclear power plant employees doing it to us. You would have seen the stock exchange minions doing it to us. Anybody who's making a living off nuclear never had a lot of opposition and it wasn't very hard to find the ones. And then so they used sophisticated technology to silence us and repress us. They arrested me several times, gave me actual gag orders so I can't talk about certain things. That's what a gag order is. I'm restricted. And so like the judge says, how long can we give them? And the prosecutor says, three and a half years, your honor. And the judge says, three and a half years? Sounds good to me. I wish it was more. That was his word. Words. So they gave me six gag orders because the people that are helped covering that up to protect them, right? So plutonium from above ground nuclear test in milk teeth. Investigation of placentia transfer in children in Switzerland from 1951 to 95. So you see this legacy of nuclear follow where it carries up into 1995. Guidelines for exposure assessment and health risk studies following a nuclear accident. It was a colossal... 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Nine thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Terrible things are looming for the children. They must be evacuated, yet nothing's done. This is a criminal nation, Japan journalists. Do you think that that crime has changed? That particular crime that they're alluding to, which is the fact that they're sending children uh, leaving them in these areas and that they're feeding them radioactive food.
and then pretending that it's okay. So the industry wasn't supposed to exist. The only reason it exists is because it's lied for its entire history. Its defense now to, to surviving is to lie and then attack and destroy everything in order to pretend that it has some attributes that humanity needs. Exposed radiation streaming into the atmosphere after number one pool boiled dry in the fire. Streaming into the atmosphere. Now, this is what that looks like. This is, but this model is only based on venting. It's not based on the actual meltdown. It's not based upon... I don't have a really good stand, a cheap dude on the stand. That was a big mistake. That's okay. But a good stand, I'd be able to shift it. You wouldn't hear nothing. It'd be really, it would stay wherever you put it. You wouldn't have to do these fancy techniques. <laughs> and I complain, don't get me wrong. Because I do complain. I, gotta, I, I have to complain about certain things. So the radioactive fallout, so it, you don't need to touch this, but it touched you. It touches everything. Then you touch that or you walk past that. And so the insects in the microscopic world didn't have radioactive fallout shelters. And so then everything in the ocean, think about a snowstorm. Then you wrap your mind around That's what you're looking at now is kind of like a snowstorm. Put food coloring in a bowl of water. Think about that as the ocean. So when it's in the ocean, it's still going to pulse. Now, there's, it's not going to pulse as far because that's what the scientists, oh, it's not going to pulse as far. And then they'll stop right there. What does that mean, though? Does it mean it's now it's neutral and it's okay? No. That's just because they can't see anything else. That's what they say. Well, it's not going to pulse as far. Yeah, but there's so much of it. <laughs> they're almost touching each other anyway. They don't need to pulse six feet because they're almost touching each other anyway. And so they were suspended in the ocean all the way from the surface to the ocean floor. And so it destroyed the bases of the food chain, the bases of the oxygen chain, the bases of the carbon sequestering chain. That trickles up quite quickly up the food chain, and in increments over several years, you'll start to see mass die-offs. We went out and documented that. Now, I have to be careful of, of everything I say because I'm the only person out to really bring in you the documentation, unfortunately, at this point in humanity's history, but at some point, many people will, will pick up the baton. Water cannons are unable to spray the reactors. Once again, the radiation doesn't have to touch you to hurt you. Now, this is different. This is gamma shines, x-rays, and neutron bursts. This is lethal doses about three football fields away. So at the base of the reaction, the shine is so much. Think of it as like 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Think about how close you can get to your campfire. Then think about a campfire at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures where you can't even throw a rock and hit it. Then think about a shine coming out of that where you're about 1,000 feet away, you can get a lethal dose right away. It was so high, and here's some more proof for that assertion, was that the radiation levels around the plant prevented helicopters now, if radiation is preventing helicopters from dumping water on the spent fuel rods, then that's forever. The helicopter can never go near it because the shine will never go away. Everything becomes irradiated. Like everything within three football fields is putting out shine. It's kind of like um, how you magnetize a screwdriver. And you lay that in a box of nails and screws and bolts and washers, and they'll pick up each other. They'll become radiated and pick up other nails and screws and bolts and everything else. And when you pick up the screwdriver, it'll be covered, and there'll be a big string of all kinds of it. That's, and when you let that go, you can take one of them and pick up another object with one of those little pieces. That's kind of a better way to think about how radiation actually works in the soil and rocks and environment and communities and the buildings and the homes and the structures, the sidewalk. And so you lose a country by default. And so the solution, they knew this could happen, so they had their backup plan was to just overwhelm you with lies, and then they really didn't expect someone like us to show up. They truly didn't expect someone like me to show up. 
And it's not that I'm super Dana and effective or anything like that. It's just the truth is so devastating to them, they can't stand it. They can't handle it. And so right away, Elaine had to block somebody again tonight because they come in, they pretend that they're part of the group here to have a conversation, and then they turn into slime balls. And Elaine will tell you, this has been happening for years to her. It's just these people are unbelievably disgusting and revolting, and uh, they, they are such cowards. They hide behind these ghost accounts. I don't hide away from anybody. Very, 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 very uh, unshy person. Dana Durnford, the nuclear proctologist.org. I don't have nothing to be ashamed of. I don't see a reason for me to hide who I am. Why would I? Why should I care? I'm just, I'm just Dana. I'm an honest person. I, I got nothing that I'm ashamed of or, or to hide from. Not that that matters. I'm Dana, and I don't understand why all the industry that attacks me will hide away. I've never had anybody in the industry come out and tell me their name. And the thing about this, uh, the IAEA, June the 2nd, 2011, admitted there's no such thing as safe levels of radiation. Right? So there you go. That's the end of the argument. So no level is safe. Therefore, that's insane. Therefore, that's nutty. Therefore, that's crazy. If no level is safe, then this is lunatic land. And so we've been betrayed uh, on a dramatic, and that's not tenable or acceptable. We can't keep it up, right? We have to solve this issue. The allowable radiation standards that the International Atomic Energy Agency allegedly uses is based upon benefit, not safety which is sunshine, which is the elements that everything is already acclimated to through genetic superior selection. The reason we have terrorist laws and we're trying to get a repository and when there's the big whoop whoop is that these are nothing like the solar system. The sun doesn't make these elements. This is not stardust behind me in the bags. The bags are, but that's not. Therefore, we have Geiger counters to find the man-made stuff. The Geiger counters are not for natural stuff, which is not harmful, and is homeostasis. Your body equalizes it. You can't get any more natural stuff in your body than your body already has. You can live in a place with a higher, what they call elevated levels of natural background, but you can't accumulate anymore. It's homeostasis. Your body regulates it. Like a thermostat regulates the temperature in your house. The cruise control regulates the speed of your vehicle. So when they're checking for food, what they've done was they raised the limit to an obscene number, and then the stuff, they never find it because they don't even, they're not really looking. But if somebody's got a Geiger counter that can find the bases, it won't, it'll still seem safe. But IAEA admitted there's no such thing. That's forever, by the way, just because they don't keep repeating it. So this is radioactive follower we're talking about, the plume. The plume covered most of North America, now over North Atlantic, including the Caribbean and Canada's east coast. And what that looks like is this is Francis IRSN showing a model of the radioactive dispersal from venting, not from the destroyed reactors, but just venting. And so when you see a plume that's a continuous line like you see in there, based upon a single isotope and a small released, not based upon the actual inventories, then you have to ask yourself, why are they doing that? Why are they being deceptive about it? That's really what everybody should be looking at, is why are they being deceptive? Officials back from Fukushima, an invisible blanket of death covers everything. Think about that statement. That's radioactive fallout, an invisible blanket of death. That's an appropriate way... Because what it does is it kills all the bacteria in the microscopic and then by proxy uh, the larvae and everything else and spores become uh, impotent. It's a nightmare. World Health Expert Blast UN Fukushima report warns of a cancer spike. Now this is the Fukushima plume from a different model from the Norwegian Institute for Air Research, I believe. And it's showing 
a dispersal. Notice now purple, you know what, what element turns purple? Potassium. So that's how sick the industry actually is. They put a potassium color into the model. Cesium doesn't turn purple when you burn it. And potassium is natural, it's harmless. It's everywhere, it's good for you, right? It doesn't come from a meltdown. These bags are not potassium. Now, the bags are a minimum of 100,000 becquels a kilogram. The li limit for food pre-Fukushima was 0 0.1 becquels a kilogram. That was only because they had nuclear power in the country. That was only for a nuclear accident. Then they had an accident, and, and they raised it. They changed the science and said, no, 500 becquels is, is okay. And this was just a group of people. Does that mean that science now says, Huh, our bad, we've been wrong for all these years. These couple of administrators are right. Not all the academics and scientists on the planet, but these couple of administrators. They should be held accountable as a deterrent to the, the bootlicking, cheerleading, mass murdering lapdogs that got away with it. But in a pinch, any heavy material will do. So, have, you need heavy material to shield it from you. Growing food is obviously nutty, right? Growing food is obviously the most stupidest thing you could do. There is no safe level of radionucleoids exposure, whether from food, water, or from the fallout pulsing through the building and getting you on the inside or other sources, period. Civil defense officials recommend that everyone prepare a shelter. In most areas of the country, you would receive ample protection in a basement shelter constructed of 8-inch concrete walls. This provides the same shielding as 12 inches of earth, 16 inches of books, or 30 inches of wood. A paper suit is stupid, right? So when you need 8 inches of cement, to block you from the radioactive fallout, not from the reactor fuel rods in the building alongside of the, the homeless that are working there. Do you get it? So being at the site, they give them a paper soup. But if you're on the other side of the country and radioactive plume comes across your country, you need a 16-inch thick shield of books, 30 inches of wood, 12 inches of earth to shield you, from the pulsing. But if you're working at the nuclear power site in Fukushima, somehow magically or anywhere else, a paper suit is going to protect you. And so by ignoring what I'm telling you, by not trying to change what I'm telling you, that's something you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. And that's something that you're not supposed to. That's something you could change by speaking out. That's something that is unacceptable, that they're only giving them paper suits. That's why, like, they treat people as if they're paper towels, then they become paper towels, right? When you're that dysfunctional that you're willing to do that, then you're the wrong people for the job, yeah? And you're a dangerous person for the job. And so giving a paper suit when they should have 12 inches or 8 inches of cement suit on, you get it? For just follow, not for the actual being on the site where the fuel rods are all over the site, where the reactor cores are exposed. And then the lawyers are unforgivable. They're not acceptable. You're not getting away with it. We're not giving up. We're not going away. We're just going to grow. I know they're all, all the nuclear academics are there rolling over on the ground laughing, but that will happen in the near future. Radioactive dust reported in Tokyo at 400 becquels a kilogram. That's radioactive follow liberated again. So it's not like the radioactive follow-up hits the ground and turns into fury dust, disappears. It's just re-liberated through uh, evaporation, morning dew, through rainfalls. It's just put right back into the environment again. So it's so insidious as it is, this is a monstrous uh, attribute, obviously. To be certain of adequate protection, however, the shielding should be that equivalent of three feet of earth. So three feet of earth? Think about those statements. 
three feet of earth, but we'll give the people working in a danger environment the paper suit or no suit. And the people right at the nuclear power plant themselves are only getting paper suits. And I can't seem to find a picture off the top of my head. I won't worry about it. And so if you grow it in food and put it in your body, when you should have eight inches of cement between you and it, is insidious. Yeah? It's insidious to grow food here. There's no maybes about that. Food around the whole region got irradiated. But so did the ground, so did the air, so did the soil, and so did the water. So the solution is not to grow more food there because you're just going to excrete it. This is what you're looking at. They can't get rid of the sewage because it's radioactive. So when you see the words 131 iodine in late October, they're calling it a recriticality, which means it's a continuous ongoing chain reaction. So it's a fresh isotope that has a short life, but it's known as a trace, but it's, but it's a very harmful isotope, but it's just one of 1,200 that is recognized. There's much more than that that are classified, around 10,000. But out of the 1,200 that are recognized as dangerous, that's one of them. <coughs> so growing food, this is so bizarre, that picture. Right? That's rice paddies. Rice paddies are literally all connected together. That's how water water table works. And so you can't grow rice ever again anywhere even like south of Tokyo, let alone all of north of Tokyo, there were seven prefectures where there's something like 300,000 bags and seven other prefectures they picked up too. They gave up on that because that looks really bad, right? But it works out to 42,000 or something bags, one-ton bags, for each of the other seven prefectures. But China had banned all 14 prefectures because of radioactive fallout, right? And so radioactive fallout, you put it in the food, you don't need to eat it. You got to sit there and it'll radiate you. Putting it into you just a single time is the worst thing that could ever happen. This is what they talked about earlier when we were talking about it. Survey shows Fukushima fallout, fallout has spread throughout Japan, throughout Japan, now confirmed at Okinawa, 1,700 kilometers away, confirmed. But yet, this is Fukushima Prefecture actually growing food there. They're still doing it. In fact, they accelerated it. And they're not going to apologize. And they're just going to continue to perpetrate these crimes upon their own people and everybody else worldwide. And so simple to solve it. All we have to do is speak out. All we have to do is raise our voices. If I had a big platform, we can end this. We can, we can definitely change the future. We've been struggling. I, I have so many things that I got to do. I have to do expeditions year after year when possible, which was incredibly difficult to put them operations together and fund them. We spent four months last year, but we, we need to take it to a different level. And this year we are. In about two months, we're going to take this to a whole different level. I'm not sitting around anymore. This is too much. It's gone too far. Hawaii dairy farmers fight irradiation by feeding boron to the cows, feeding boron to cows and goats. It doesn't work that way. And so they continue to poison the population, yeah? Civil defense officials recommend that for the best fallout protection, your family have these two things an approved fallout shelter, and enough supplies to enable you to stay in it for a maximum of two weeks. Now, they had shelter in place because these plumes came through there. Now, there was around 2,000 people died right away. We've never seen that before. And they try to blame it on the evacuation, but it doesn't work that way. You can go look at all previous evacuations for typhoons and hurricanes and everything else. And you'll never see, see like millions of people evacuated just in the last couple of years for these types of events. And there's usually no more than one or two people will die, which is typically what would die with that kind of a population, even if they didn't move on an evacuation. But in Japan, with a half a million people, 
was over 2,000 people died. They died from radiation sickness right away. The levels were actually causing people to lose all their hair right on the spot and vomit uncontrollably. Hawaii, the air spiked to 50 times normal with uranium. Now, they said 238, but by the way, that's not what it was. But alarming report of Fukushima followed, followed harming U.S. and United States infants. Study says fallout from nuclear disaster in Fukushima may be harming local infants. That was San Diego. That's the same one. BC Canada sees a spike in the number of sudden infants deaths. Why so many have come up this year, we don't know. But it was blamed actually on the fallout. Within that two-week period, it is estimated that community resources will have been restored to give you some help. A short time later, assistance should be available from the state and federal governments. Yeah, they're picking up bags. The trick you to go back. Get started right away at protecting your family from fallout. The way to protect yourself from fallout is to run away. Controversy after U.S. government estimated estimates showed 40,000 microceiver thyroid dose for California children. So once again, the fallout was real, see? Latest forecast has all of California under radiation threat. Shows levels as high as in Japan. So there's an, we showed that model, I think, earlier. Yeah, we showed that model earlier. But you can see the United States got smoked. Federal government declares a rear. So it's not just humans, but we've seen, you'll see it show up in the marine life. And we've done expeditions up and down the coastline. This is another model showing the radioactive fallout. It's coming out of Japan. It continues to come out. See Hawaii in the center of the Pacific. And then it covers everything. Alaska covers the continents, Canada, United States. Fox, Seattle sees a 35% infant mortality spike. Yeah, because the plume came straight in, right? Austrian forecast map shows east of Los Angeles. And that's their map there. So it shows the whole continent and the Pacific Ocean covered. North American Europe forecast from Francis. We showed that model earlier being covered. Fox News is iodine-131 killing babies. Well, it could have been plutonium or americium or neptunium. The 131 is just a tracer. But if they say that, then 75 years of lion comes to the surface. So they keep saying the same lie over and over. Because the minute they tell you the truth, then all of a sudden you're going to realize you've been manipulated for 75 years. But now is the time where you have no choice but to gut up. Now you've got to make a stand like me. We have no choice but to educate the population, inform the population, no matter how long or how hard or difficult to do what I do every single day. It's almost impossible to do what I do every day. And I understand the importance of it. And so I put so much effort into conquering problems and solving them in order to bring you a platform where other people can just come by and say, well, this looks pretty reasonable. Let's hear it out. And then I provide the documentation as I talk. Now, I'd never wanted the job. I don't want the job. I can't stand what I do, but I love what I do. Being a monster, being dishonest and disingenuous and deceptive and deceitful is the norm. I stand out like a sore thumb. You're not fancy like Fox and MSNBC. The hell with you. I'm going to go listen to the fancy ones who are going to manipulate you silly. And you learn more here than you will in 35 years at their site. In one show, you'll learn more at my site, in 30 to 40 years of watching TV. In fact, you'll learn nothing watching TV. You'll be bombarded with advertisement of things you have, you're not even, you will never use, but some section out there might, so they'll bombard the whole, everybody with that stuff. Many times, and then species counts over the last number of years, and I'm covering that tonight, but I have to include that in the conversation. You can see that at the nuclearproctologist.org. That's a special site, whether you understand that or not. That site provides you the facts. 
And you go to the site, for instance, the first set of pictures are before and after pictures of the coastline of British Columbia. That's staggering. It's really hard to wrap your mind around it. And so, but at some point when your mind gets wrapped around it, and you go to my site, then you get it. Then you understand it. And so I'm trying to fill this void in the hopes that I would educate enough people. I wouldn't have to do it. I know, Dana, that's a bit selfish. I know. But if I can educate enough people, I can sit back and yuck it up. But I'll always have to go out, and anybody who's popular, have to keep an eye on them to make sure that they're genuine. I want to do interviews. It, things like this don't just happen overnight. At some point, I'll crack that code, and then we'll have interviews, important ones, beneficial ones. But what that means, then, is i got to provide the documentation for the interviews on top of that. So I'm going to work myself silly coming up, hopefully, in the near future. I'm looking forward to it. I can handle it. We spent so many years now building this operation. We're so close. So infant deaths after Fukushima was because Fukushima followed. You will also want miscellaneous equipment, such as a calendar, clock, and candles. A screwdriver, rubber gloves, and a shovel also may come in handy. A shovel to bury your loved ones. Strange TV interview with pro-nuclear professor in a study finding increased infant mortality in U.S. after Fukushima. That's the norm, by the way. The new study showed 20,000 U.S. deaths after Fukushima, not 14. And so they're growing food in places like this, where you look at what they've done here in Canada, they suspended the mobile radiation measurements around Vancouver, B.C., which is right across from Japan, until further notice as the radioactive cloud was coming in. And so we did confirm, though, it's, uh, these are two separate studies shown one to the left, the actual fallout, and the right, the modeling of what they figured was going to happen. The one to the left proved that it happened. So this is not a conjecture in our opinion. Japan considering moving the capital away from Tokyo because Tokyo was so irradiated. More information on supplies and equipment, together with information on the approved fallout shelters, is contained in this booklet. Use it as your guide in planning and stocking your shelter. Prime Minister's study set up alternative capital. Prime Minister, there will be broader, more discoveries later this year. There will be chaos. Japan crews are facing a 100-year battle at Fukushima. Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima. We'll be fighting the radiation on the order of tens of hundreds of years. I have another study with 220 million atoms per liter of just a single isotope. That meant all the other isotopes, similar qualities, would have been in that liter. These are catastrophic uh, confirmations that you ta we're talking about. Well, let's suppose for a moment that you can't get to a shelter in an emergency. What can you do to protect yourself? Radioactive fallout. First, look for a basement. One below ground level will cut radiation to one-tenth of the level outside. The safest spot is in a corner which is least exposed to windows and deepest below the ground. Because you need that much between you and the radiation. So eating it is ludicrous. Putting it in food and shipping it is criminal. I'm not going to rest until we stop it. I'm not going to rest until we convict all of them that we can and that we have a big list of people that perpetrated the cover-up and the crime. And it's, we're not just going to go away. We're not just going to lie down. We're not just going to pretend. We're not just going to grow, give it up. It's just not going to work that way. Fukushima melted fuel is drifting into the ocean and onto land lacking any containment. Again, this is how fallout also works. It goes in the ocean, then it's liberated from the ocean, and it, and it goes into, blows into the communities. People get an exceptional dose. Health harm will go on for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years, just from that venue. So it has incredible insidious properties about it. The forecast showed high-altitude radiation cloud concentrating over California, western U.S. I've showed you many of those models. Detected in the aquifers, supplies, drinking water is the large number of people. 
So it's considered a tracer, but it's brutal numbers, and it's still a brutal element. It still destroys your cells and your DNA. And because there's so much of it, and because of the way it assimilates into your body, it has incredible, brutal property. Fukushima's safety levels are not safe at all. So they picked up the bags just to manipulate people. Only 3% of the land, you should have picked up all Japan by proxy, and they're admitting that. Major cities, cities are being irradiated. They're not telling people the truth. If there is adequate warning, you can improve a basement's protection substantially by blocking the windows with bricks. Because it pulses through the radio, the winds. Or other heavy materials. Expert in Japan, nuclear expert. Plutonium is everywhere, it's everywhere. After Fukushima reactors exploded, it's being redeposited. Redeposited in un anticipated locations. It's everywhere you go. It's running also right into the Pacific Ocean. So a school up by Tokyo with 4 million backholes, that tells the story. It's catastrophic. And so the solution is not to cover it up and pretend it's not happening. That's not the solution. That's not a way forward. Never was, never will be, and never could be. We're going to call it quits here. If you are in a house with no basement, the best protection will be found on the ground floor in the central part of a house. Now, you see how it pulses right through the house? That's just the pulsing from radioactive fallout. We got difficult times in front of us. And what I'm asking of people is difficult. I'm asking people to donate and help me and fund the things that got to get done. I also don't want to tell the industry exactly what I'm doing because that jeopardizes my life. And what I'm trying to do is establish because I've been doing it for many, many years. I'm not some random person. And because the longer I wait, the harder it is to get done, the more dangerous it is for me to wait. You'll find links uh, usually at the bottom of each of these videos, in the bottom of the descriptions, how to donate to me. Now is an important time. Now we're... We're moving forward. We're pushing back as hard as we can. We built the whole operation. We got, this is going to be a really insane year. It's going to be a good year for what I'm doing. This is going to be the kickoff year for what I'm doing. The Fukushima anniversary is coming up in less than two weeks. And now normally they kick me off YouTube for three months just before the anniversary for the last couple of years. This year they already de-indexed me and everything else. 60 million Japanese irradiated. It was much worse than that. The whole country is destroyed. High concentrations hit North America. Rich in cesium and all the other isotopes, folks. The model behind me is from NOAA. That's one study, and that's a dispersion model, assumption, I should say, and from NOAA. And the other one is an actual study of the radioactive fallout. A million becquels in just that study alone. It's, it's time to make a stand. It's time to fight back. I wish that I could do so much more, and so I will. Proof also showed up in samples of strawberries and kale and grass in Northern California. There's so much documentation, I'm not going to try to get rid of it or through it all tonight, because it's just you can't do it. I don't want to make the shows too long, even though I feel that I should do the shows for three hours. I don't do it in the near future. That's exactly what will happen. We'll be bringing in lots of interviews and lots of documentation is supported. In the near future, this will be a very, very highball operation. I can only get there with your help, with your support, with your understanding that I can't give away everything that I'm doing. Therefore, I have no choice but to do things the hard way, and that's not acceptable either. So I'm asking this planet to please support me. Please understand how expensive and difficult and consuming, time-consuming, energy-consuming, monetary-consuming it is to do anything. And if you look at the operation I got, it's a massive operation, and we, we desperately need to raise money so I'm not struggling every month like I am now. Now we're barely keeping up with it. We got to get ahead, and to get ahead means we got to raise thousands of dollars. And so it's... Just because I got to do it don't mean that it's diff too difficult to get done. It means that I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's got to be done. I don't have a say in this. 
I, I do apologize. I can't walk away. I can't give it up. I can't slow down. The only thing I can do is keep the pressure on the industry and keep educating people. I have no options, and we don't either, so I will continue to do what I'm doing at all costs. I see it as a shining light. I understand that one video can change the game, and so we got to keep trying. God bless everyone. Hugs for everyone. Open your eyes, tell me lies, smiles hide in the skies. Oh, we jumping like flies, falling from the skies. My body jumping like flies. Hate is going fast in the hazy cloud of gas. Makes us fade away, telling you obey. No way, Jose, no comprende, not okay. I'm a dog and I stray. Don't be a sheep and stay back. Getting hurt inside the word it flirted with the fallout. Caught with your balls out. Nothing scared, future wasted, can't save it. Major bed, now lay it. Radical casino, intravenous chemo, killer Fukushima. Oh no, we dropping like flies. Final prayer, bye bye. Dropping like flies. Oh my, I just wanna sigh. Call me craze, end of days, digging up graves, run for the caves. Nuclear haze, going out with a blaze.